Okay, let's talk about the Praxis test. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about Praxis math. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for a Praxis exam for a teacher certification, and that is excellent. And the Praxis test is by far the most popular test used in the United States uh, for teacher certifications. More, matter of fact, uh, more than half of the states in the United States uh, use uh, the Praxis uh, test for their teacher certifications. And many of these exams that you have to take have a dedicated math section. So if you don't pass the math, you don't get to uh, uh, get your certification and get into the classroom, which is important for not only you, but for us as well, because we need great teachers. But uh, what type of tests out are, are out there have a dedicated uh, math section on it in terms of Praxis tests? Well, you have the Praxis Core, you have uh, elementary exams, you have middle school exams, you have exams to uh, for para, uh, paraprofessionals. So there are a ton of tests out there that have a dedicated math section. And of course, the math is going to be different depending on uh, where you're at. So if you're, you know, kind of going to become a paraprofessional, you certainly don't need to know the level of mathematics uh, for like a middle school or high school uh, teacher. But uh, nevertheless, what I have here is a practice problem that all of you out there, uh, irrespective of what practice test you're going to be taking, should be able to handle. And here it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if you can do this easy little problem. Okay, this might be a nice, uh, interesting little practice problem to see, you know, what your current algebra skills are. And uh, just going back to the math here real quick, uh, most of the math on all these exams is going to be some sort of combination of basic math, like arithmetic, and then you're going definitely going to have to know some algebra and some geometry, and for some of you out there, even more advanced uh, algebra, like algebra two plus concepts, trigonometry, etc. So you're going to need to know specifically what you need to know for your exam. But um, anyways, before we get going here, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and I've had the privilege of taking the Praxis exam. So I know what it's like to prepare for these exams. And I'm telling you right now, even for someone like myself who has a degree in mathematics and a master's degree, it took a lot of effort to pass this exam, a lot of study. Uh, so you just can't go into these exams saying, oh, I took um, algebra uh, in high school. I did really good. I did really well in my math course in college. Well, if you've been away from math for a while, you're going to want to brush up and review. And um, what I've done over the years is construct uh, test prep courses for Praxis uh, tests. So I'm going to leave a link to my math help program. If you just go into the teacher certification part of my website, um, you'll see all the various Praxis exams I do have uh, that can help you out uh, with the core, elementary school, middle school, paraprofessional, etc. So if that's something that interests you, you can definitely check that out. But let's get into this practice problem. And here we go. Okay, so 2x over 7 minus x over 3 seems like a pretty basic algebra problem. So maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can do it real quick. But uh, uh, before I answer this question, let's just see how well you uh, do with fractions. So let me scoot this over here for a second. And let's have you do this problem. Okay, 2 sevenths minus 1 third. Okay. All right, so... Now, before I tell you the answer to this, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to do this on your own, but most of you are probably thinking in terms of, oh, I need to find the LCD. And if you're thinking in terms of the LCD, that's excellent because you need the lowest common denominator. We can't add or subtract fractions without the denominator. And the denominator, again, is these bottom numbers. They have to be equal in order to add or subtract fractions. Okay, so. Most of us hopefully remember that about fractions. And if you don't remember uh, fractions, you're like, oh, yeah, I think that's the case. Well, you definitely need to do a lot of work to get ready for the mathematics on the Praxis exam. But I'm going to give you a nice little hack, a nice little shortcut that will make doing fraction problems when it comes to addition and subtraction so much easier. And this is a great tool to be able to do problems that um, that uh, involve variables, okay? So let's go ahead and see this little hack in motion. Now, before I do that, let's just talk about real quick 
how um, you would do this with the LCD, right? So my question to you is, what is the lowest common denominator? Now, if you said 21, that's excellent, okay? And that is, in fact, the correct answer. So what we would want to do is change both of these denominators, rewrite them so they're both 21. So how would I, uh, here I have a three, for example, how would I get this to be 21? Well, I have to multiply this by seven, right? Then I'd get 21, but if I multiply, this uh, denominator down here by seven, I have to multiply this numerator by seven. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here with this seven, we're gonna say, okay, how can I get this to be 21? Well, we're gonna multiply that by three, right? That gets me 21, so I have to multiply the numerator by three. So when I do all that work, I'm gonna have three times two is what? Six over three times seven is 21 minus uh, seven times one is seven over seven times three is 21. Now. Uh, just a quick review, remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply the respective numerators and denominators. Okay, so all basic skills that you should have. All right, so here is the problem. So what is the answer? Okay, pretty much did like 90% of the work here for you. So what is the answer? Well, again, when the denominators are the same, what we do is we write the denominator. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, operation. It's going to be uh, 6 minus 7 in the numerator. 6 minus 7. And what is 6 minus 7? Okay, well, pause. Well, hopefully all of you said negative 1. So the final answer is negative 1 over 21. Okay, so if you got that right, that's excellent. But that took a little bit of, you know, uh, work to do. Okay, not a lot of work, but it definitely took, you know, some manipulating of these fractions, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, erase this and put our answer here, negative uh, one over 21. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you this little technique. We're gonna go back to our original little problem and then we're gonna apply this little technique to do this problem right here. Okay, so here it is. I call it the bow tie method. Uh, this is the pattern you're going to wanna remember. It's this step first, an arrow from the bottom right to the left, then it's gonna be this step second and then this step third, okay, one, two, three, and that's specific order. So let me show you how it works. Okay, so you start from here. It's gonna be three times two is what? That is going to be six, okay? We're, what we're gonna be doing here is forming our numerator. So three times two is six. Now we're gonna go from here to here, okay? Seven times one, and what we're doing is we're multiplying. So three times two is six, seven times one is seven. So we're gonna put that seven here, and because this is a subtraction problem, we're going to put a subtraction operator right there. This forms our numerator. And then we're going to finally go from this times this to form our denominator. 7 times 3 is 21. And take a look at our uh, answer here. 6 minus 7 is negative 1 over 21. The exact same thing as that. But look how easy I did this. So it's this, this, this times this, uh, minus this times this, over this times this. Done, done, done. Okay? So... You want to know these nice little uh, shortcuts in order to go faster and be accurate on uh, your Praxis exam. So now let's go ahead and apply the same thing here uh, because we have some variables, that don't, but that doesn't stop us. Okay, this particular technique works with this. Now we could uh, go and find uh, and change each one of these fractions. Okay, technically these are what we call rational expressions because we have a variable and we can uh, rewrite these uh, just as we did the um, these fractions with just numbers, uh, such that they have a denominator of 21. But we're just going to go ahead and use this bow tie method, this, this little shortcut. So 3 times 2x is what? Well, that is 6x, okay? Then I got 7 minus x is what? Minus 7x, okay? And that's going to be all over. 7 times 3 is 21. So 6 minus 7x. Hopefully you know how to combine like terms, okay? But this is just going to be negative 1x over 21, and there you go, okay? That is the answer. Now, if you got this correct, all right, without all um, 
you know, my assistance, that's excellent. But I would have to say that this is a very basic problem. Okay, you're gonna have to know, for the most of you out there, you're gonna have to know much, much more algebra to be successful on your respective practice uh, test, okay? Most of the praxis exams out there, maybe the easiest one could be the paraprofessional, uh, but most of them are gonna, um, and even then, the paraprofessional has a considerable amount of algebra, geometry, and basic math on it. So if you've been away from math for a while, okay, definitely, don't just say, oh yeah, I used to be really good at math, so therefore I don't have to study. I'm telling you from personal experience, as a fellow teacher, you're going to have to be uh, ready for these exams. The worst thing you could do is to go in and not really, you know, completely study and then fail the test and then go, to go back and have to, you know, take it again. Okay, and that does happen, by the way. I would say, um, you know, I know for the high school level praxis exam, uh, to teach high school level mathematics is you know pretty challenging mathematics on there like calculus and whatnot probably like 50 percent at least 50 percent of the people fail that test the first time because they didn't give it enough respect so it doesn't make a difference what practice practice exam you're taking you know respect the that the chan the that the exam excuse me is going to be challenging all right just don't be like oh you know i'll be ready for it that's the wrong approach okay and hopefully i could help you out uh again uh, you could check out my praxis uh test prep courses for various teacher certification exams by just following the link in the description of this video and then going to my teacher certification uh portion of my website but hopefully this video helped you out and if that is the case don't forget to subscribe as i'm posting videos like this all the time on my youtube channel and with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on your respective praxis exams and your teaching careers. Thank you for your time and have a great day.